Good morning and welcome to Grace Fellowship Church. We want to welcome you all to our Lord's Day English worship service. And we also want to welcome any guests who are coming in for the first time and our usual visitors. So if any of you have any questions or if you'd like to know more about this local church, please do not hesitate to approach our reception table just beside the main door and chat with our members and our admin team after the service. We are always grateful to be with you every Lord's Day, and it's always a delight to fellowship, to worship, and to be fed with the Word of God together with all of you. And the one who will be feeding us with God's Word today is none other than our brother Christian Tolentino, who will be preaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 31, about the variety of gifts and roles which we are called to use and perform for God's glory. But before that, let us begin by joining our voices to sing hymns, praising the Lord, the giver of all good gifts. As James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Please all rise and as one body, lift our voices in praise to our Lord God, who gives salvation, gifts, and blessings to all His people. Let's all sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Thank you. 
We shall one day reign with our with Christ our Savior, who sits on a throne like nothing in this world. As the prophecy in Daniel chapter 7, verse 27 says, Then the reign, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him. Let us all sing about this truth. There is a higher throne. There is a higher throne than all this world has known. We're faithful ones from every tongue will one day come. Before the sun will stand, made faultless through the Lamb, believing hearts find promised grace. Salvation comes in heaven's voices sing.
is a higher throne. Therefore, I exhort you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, living, holy, and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so, brethren, as we wait for Christ, let us consecrate our lives for Him and His people's service. Let us all sing, Take my life and let it be. Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my moments and my days Let them flow in ceaseless praise Let them flow in ceaseless praise Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. standing for the reading of God's word. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ 
As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects and to him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. You may now be seated. pray. <clears throat> Father, indeed, you are worthy of all the praises of your saints, for you are magnificent, marvelous, glorious, all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty God. You are sovereign and in total control of everything. You are indeed faithful, merciful, and gracious. Father, you are holy, and in your holiness we see our transgressions, our sins against you, O holy God. None of us here have been perfect this week. None of us has reflected your holiness perfectly, and so we humbly come to you for forgiveness. Forgive us for those times that we sought for our own glory and not yours. Forgive us even for those unguarded moments. Nagyabang po kami. Naging masungit. Naging irritable. Forgive us, Lord. Salamat na lang po talaga for your patience on us. We thank you for your forgiveness. It's always available for those who confess. And yes, we are truly thankful for forgiving all of our sins and for the salvation that you've given us. We thank you even for the everyday blessings that you faithfully giving us, for the provisions for our needs, physical strength and protection. Father, we remember your goodness and praise you and thank you even for helping and allowing one of our sisters, Sister Renee, to pass her board exam. Truly, you are good and awesome. Praise be to you, O God. Now we ask for your grace. Father, be gracious to our beloved country. Allow, O Lord, those who are in authority to execute justice to this land. We pray especially for the salvation, their salvation, those who are in the government. Father, allow them to hear the gospel. We lift up to you also, Father, our congregation, this congregation. You know that there are those among us who are going through some challenges right now. We pray for those who are struggling financially. Will you provide opportunities for them and meet their needs? We also lift up to you, Lord God, for those who are struggling with their health. Uh, marami po sa amin nagkakasakit. Will you graciously strengthen us and heal whatever sickness we have? We ask for continuous healing for our brother Dan, who's right now in the hospital. Will you strengthen him, give wisdom to his physicians, and hasten his recovery? Those who are having troubles, Father God, we lift up to you with their relationships. Will you give grace and help us, Lord God, to forgive and mend these relationships? And Father, finally, we lift up to you our time together today. Give us humble hearts and teachable spirits, able to receive your truth and ready to apply them. I lift up to you, Lord God, myself. Allow me to preach the truth. 
Father, may I preach Christ and only Him. This is our prayer, Father. In Jesus' name, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Yeah, I have to apologize for the absence of the British accent. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, uh, let's pray for uh, the recovery of our brother then. Um, as most of you know, uh, nagpa extract po siya ng kanyang wisdom tooth. And there, are, uh, there were complications. So yeah. Uh, right now, uh, let me ask you to please stand and let's uh, read all together aloud our main passage today found in 1 Corinthians 12, chapter, uh, chapter 12, verses 12, 27 to 31. It reads, Now you are Christ's body and, in, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healings, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts. And I show you still a more excellent way. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. You may now be seated. Well, for sure, you already heard of the word appendix. So it's a small pouch attached to the end of the large intestine. Before, before experts says it has no clear function in the body, human body. But in recent research, uh, they say they, that appendix excretes some kind of cells which help our immune system in fighting infections. Uh, the appendix range from 6 to 10 centimeters, about this size. That. So, and yes, it's a it's considerably small part of our body. But you know, this small human body part can greatly affect the whole body when it malfunction. By God's grace, uh, most of you know that I personally experienced this uh, March 2020, just right before the lockdown. I had appendicitis, the infection of the appendix, and I had to go through appendectomy, the removal of appendix. By God's grace, through the surgery, the, uh, the comp or though the, there were complications, God pulled me through that danger. Well, you see, even the smallest part of our body that we deem insignificant can positively or negatively affect us. Just like what we have studied uh, last Sunday in our last verse, says, verse 26, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, the Corinthian church were undervaluing and overvaluing their gifts. As we've already studied, some of them, due to this warped thinking, were unsatisfied with their own gifts, spiritual gifts, and desire more of the prominent gifts, causing them yet again to be disunited as they were disunited in so many issues. And it hampers their spiritual growth. And yeah, like an appendix, as small as it is, it could greatly affect the whole body. This unity pestered the whole congregation of Corinth. Remember, that is the first issue that Paul dealt with in this letter. Their congregation was pestered by disunity in so many issues. Their immaturities manifesting in many different ways. One of which is our topic, the spiritual gifts. And may I remind us all that this unity undermines our testimony. 
That's why Christ himself prayed for this in John 17, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them, even as you have loved me. So as Paul summarizes the chapter, uh, chapter 12, he reminds them and also was today that though we may differ from each other, we ought to work together in unity because we are all part of one body. We, are, we all have one head, that is Christ. We're all under his rule and reign. And just like his prayer, Jesus' prayer to the Father, we must manifest the perfect unity of the triune God through our working together in unity. Title of our message today, Individual Members, One Body of Christ. We have three divisions. Every believer is a member of the body of Christ, verse 27. Secondly, every believer has been gift, given a gift for the body, 28 to 30. And lastly, every believer must work through the more excellent way, the last verse 31. We have learned from our, yeah, again from our previous uh, study from verses 11, 1 to 11 that we have been given gifts by the Holy Spirit upon our salvation. Not for personal and individual gain, but to be used in different ministries for building up the body of Christ. Pastor jo, from Pastor George's uh, sermon last Sunday, 21 to 26, we learned that these various gifts have different functions in the church, just like dif the different organs of the body. Thus, not a single part can brag over the other because they all play significant roles in the body. To our first point, or division, every believer is a member of the body of Christ. In verse 27, he says, Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. Having compared the, the church to a body in the previous verses to explain the dynamics of how the different parts of the church should work together, Paul now calls or pertains, tinukoy po niya, the Corinthian church as the body of Christ. What he means in this allusion, allusion is like the human body, Christ is the head and the church is his body. And like we, what we explained pre previously, the church, just like a human body, is composed of many members. The church, meaning the called out ones, ecclesia or iglesia, the called out ones from darkness into God's marvelous light. Those who already experience God's forgiveness through Jesus and follow Him in faith. The believers are the ones who compose the church as a body of believers. This venue here in Madison is not the church. This is just the venue of the believers, of the church. The assembly of believers is the church. We are the church. In this specific location, we are the visible church locally gathering. We are the local church here. And in this local church, you and I belong to. Wherein we express our mutual love and respect as sinners saved by grace. Now, our membership or our belonging to a local church only manifests the truth that we're part of the universal church meaning the body of Christ all across the globe and history. All the believers, all who uphold Christ as their only Lord and Savior in whatever nation and in whatever point in time belongs to the invisible body of Christ. You and I belong to the church. See how Paul puts this truth 
in even in the beginning of this letter in chapter 1 he says verse 2 to the church of God which is at Corinth that's local to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus saints by calling with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ their Lord and ours that's universal but why go through the, the pain of explaining this Excuse me. Well, this is to inculcate in our minds that each one of us, small as it may be, is part of the church, the one body of Christ, locally here in this place and also the wider church all across the world. And the whole church from all places and all times. And we have one head, that is Christ himself who saved us from our sins. If you profess that Christ is your Savior and Lord, then however little you think you are, you are part of his body, the church. And all the members of his church are given by God's specific gifts that we must use for the welfare of the body as we have discussed previously we actually praise God here in GFC Grace Fellowship we have lots of volunteers in different ministries it could be I confirmed this earlier <laughs> that uh, more than half of the uh, members sorry not the congregation more than half of the members are volunteers so that's for official volunteers and of course there are those unofficially volunteering and just trying to help out in any way they can you know so praise god indeed for that there's really no place for envy and boasting when we realize that each one of us is part of the body of christ and we are all under one banner christ our lord our head Again, each one of us is part of Christ's body. We are, we are His church. Before we move on, do we truly acknowledge Christ as our Lord and Savior? Back to step one. Do we truly acknowledge Him? If we do, do we then acknowledge the church as His body here on earth? And are we seriously taking our parts, our roles, our gifts in the body of Christ? Brethren, let us pray that by God's grace, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us the gift that has given us for the ministry so that we may be able to do our part in the body. To our second point, every believer has been given a gift or gifts for the body in verse 28 it says and god has appointed in his church in the church now we can see paul reiterating that the gifts only come from god god graciously and sovereignly gave his church gifted men and gifts he endowed the believers the various spiritual abilities to each one according to his will to be used for the common good that is for the building and equipping of the saints toward the unity of the body paul gives a short list here and he numbered the first three gifts personally i believe this is not to indicate that there's superiority or inferiority among the believers which has already been dealt with in the previous verses. But this is just to show the necessity and importance of their function in the church, especially upon building it up. And just like the previous um, verses, it says in verse 7 to 10, that this is not... Sorry. Yeah, just like the what has been said in verses 7 to 10. 
So, this is not an exhaustive list of gifts. Okay, uh, we may wonder uh, why is mine not there. So, this is not an exha exhaustive. This is just a short list. Later on, uh, we'll read the other passage that um, uh, nandun po yung ibang gifts. So, we may also observe um, uh, dito po sa mga gifts ato, that there are basically two categories or types of gifts. The speaking and the service. So, let's go through them very quick. Again, in verse 28, it says, God appointed in the church first apostles. And this pertains to the 12 apostles of Christ. Of course, Judas being um, like betrayed, having betrayed Jesus, he was replaced by Matthias in Acts. So, he's the 12th apostle. And then, plus one, that is the apostle Paul. So, technically and officially, um, these are the only men that we can call the apostles of Christ. Apostles means sent ones. Mga isinugo. And they are the only ones which the Bible says who were sent for the particular work in the church. There are at least three basic qualifications for, Christ, for Christ's apostleship. Number one, has accompanied Christ in His earthly ministry and has witnessed the resurrected Christ. Secondly, has been commissioned by Christ Himself. Thirdly, has to authenticate their apostleship by demonstrating signs and wonders. That is, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 12. The main function given to them in the body of Christ is to lay its foundation. Ephesians 2, 20. Through receiving, declaring, and writing God's word until it is completed and to authenticate their message through signs and wonders. There are other, others who were called apostles also in the Bible. But, um, compared to the 13, these other apostles who were called in the Bible were not sent by Christ. They were sent by the other apostles themselves. Question, here's the question. Do we still have apostles right now? Well, the answer to that is no and yes. The 13 apostles are dead now and were not replaced in the scriptures. So technically, they're all gone. But yes, we do still have them through their writings in the Bible. So it still serves their function in the church today as we have the Bible right now. So having said that, those who claim to be apostles today, and dami po nating nakikita sa television, calling themselves, uh, kiniklaim po nila na sila po ay apostol ng Dios o ni Cristo. Those are fake. They're not real apostles. So please don't fall for them. Since they can no longer meet the qualifications of the apostleship stated in the Bible, no one can claim now to be Christ's apostle. Again, their function in the body is uniquely designed by God only for these 13 men. Second, that the apostle Paul mentioned in verse 28 again, he says, the prophets. Now, this was already explained by Brother Josh two Sundays ago. Prophets most, mostly rebuked the nation of Israel for their sin and called them to repentance, telling forth the word of God to Israel. Yes, there are times that they would be giving the, there would be given revelation from, from God about the future, but this doesn't necessarily mean that it's the only function of the prophets. So there are examples of the prophets also in the New Testament. Today, since the scripture is already complete, the foretelling, F-O-R-E, the foretelling function is really not needed anymore. So that's why here in Grace Fellowship, GFC, we uphold 
that the foretelling function of the prophets, um, ito po ay wala na. And kagaya rin naman ng lagi nating naririnig, that ito, kinonfirm ko din po, SEC registered po tayo as non-profit organization. Sorry for that. <laughs> non-profit. Y- yung mga nauna pong pastor sa akin dito, <laughs> nasabi na po nila lahat to. <laughs> yeah. Now, going back, the foretelling function of the prophets is already being done now by the preachers and teachers of the word. So, that, yun po ang susunod na sasabihin ni Apostol Pablo. Sa 28, he says, third, the teachers. So, this pertains to all who has been given the ability to study, interpret, and articulate the scriptures, its truths, and doctrines clearly. This office and gift is not limited to the pastors. The gift of teaching is not limited to the pastors. Ang dami pong mga tagapagturo din sa loob ng iglesia. Actually, we praise God again here in Gypsy that uh, God has given us able teachers in all age groups now. From kids of grace to the youth, to crosswalk or young adults, men of the word, women of grace, golden ladies, PDF 242, Tagalog Bible study online. Meron po tayong mga tagapagturo na ibinigay ng Diyos. At sa lahat po, to all the small groups meeting in and out of this venue, praise God for these faithful and able teachers that He has showered us with. Set to the next, he says, then miracles, then gifts of healings. These are men who were given the ability to display the power of God through miracles and healing. Miracles, he is related with the power to cast out demons given to the apostles or their uh, mga kasama po nila, as well as the gift of healing. By the power of God, these men perform healing instantaneously and totally. As explained before, these are temporary gifts for the purpose of authenticating the ministry of the apostles. So right now, again, beware, mag-ingat po tayo for those that we can see na nag-perform ng healing ministry. Again, instantaneously and totally ang healing po na pinaperform dito. So we believe that God can still do miracles today and hear our prayers for healing. But that's according to His will. According to God's will. Next, in verse 28, the gifts of helps. The original language for this word conveys the idea of taking off the burden from someone and place it on oneself. Binubuhat ang kabigatan ng iba. We can compare this gift to the one that was mentioned in Romans 12 verse 7, the gift of service. So both both of these gifts have a wide range of application in the church and very critical for the other gifts to function well. There are those, of course, who anonymously help the sick or even the, help the financially challenged brethren. There are those who help by running errands for the church. Again, um, Nagbanggit po ang ating pastor na nakaraan, Pastor George mentioned some, uh, the, uh, last Sunday, ayan yung banggitin ko na rin, wag na ako magpatalo ngayon. Huh? Uh, I remember those who helped in, and took pain in planning and 
in the construction of this venue. They literally went out of their comfort zone, going to the north, to the south, for the materials needed here. Praise God for you. So they were big help. And of course, right now, and dami pa rin pong tumutulong. Thank you. Praise God for you. Next is the gift of administrations. The gift of administrations is a gift of leadership. The regional word for administration literally means to steer, to pilot, or to direct. By implication, this is someone who can lead ministries in the church effectively. Elders and pastors of the church who are in leadership manifest this gift. And then last, in verse 28, he says, various kinds of tongues. So again, this is another temporary sign gift. This doesn't pertain to some gibberish language that some believe to be more spiritual and superior. Gusto niyo po ba ng sample? Well, most of you know my background. I came from a charismatic heavily charismatic uh, church. I was taught, taught na mag, yeah. <laughs> but um, hindi ko po natutunan. <laughs> this is the ability given by God to speak other language even without prior knowledge of it. That's supernatural. And that is to authenticate the apostles' ministry. So what Paul basically is saying here, what Paul wanted to show here in this list is the variety of gifts sovereignly given by God to the church, interdependently working, interdependent, not independent, working together inside the one body in harmony. Now, again, if you're still curious about the other gifts, because you did not see them on the list, wala yung akin. So here's another list in Romans 12, verse 3 to 8. For though the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly, if prophecy according to proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. These are the other gifts. And yeah, many of you even unknowingly help the church Ito mostly hindi na pa nasasabi the, the givers of the church. Praise God for you. Excuse me. Now to emphasize that God sovereignly designed the diversity in the church, Paul asked them these questions in verses 29 and 30. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healings, do they? All do not speak tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? Of course, the obvious answer to all of these questions, brethren, is a big no. These gifts are sovereignly given by God to each believer. And each one has been given at least one gift according to God's design. No one gets all of them. No one. And each of them are properly distributed. Bawat isa. Properly distributed by God. 
So again, there's really no point for them, the Corinthian church, and for us today to envy others and their gifts and undervalue ourselves for what we have been given. Just like in verse 14 to 20 of the same chapter, he says, For the body is not one member but many. If the foot says, Because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body. Is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? And if the ear says, Because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body. It is not for this reason any, le any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now, God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as He desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? Yeah, just imagine the whole body. Lahat po ay mata. It won't function that way. We must acknowledge the gift or the gifts we've been given and work again interdependently with other believers along with their various gifts because we are all part of the one body, the body of Christ, the church. There's no believer who should say, oh, I'm not a pastor. I'm just a regular attendee. Dito lang ako sa tabi. Oh, I'm not a teacher. I can be useful in the church. Dito lang ako. Wala akong ambag. No, sir. No, ma'am. If you're a believer and God, the Holy Spirit, resides in you, you were certainly been given a gift for the common good of the church. Actually, just being present every Lord's Day. That's our first ministry, right? As emphasized nung nakaraang, nakaraan na uh, members meeting. Because just by showing up uh, regularly, yeah, that means a lot. It's an encouragement just to see you come every Sunday. And from there, from there, we'll see how God will reveal to us through His Word other ministry opportunities that He can use us according to His design. Before we go to our last point, do we even have the desire to be used by God for the edification or the building up of His church? Brethren, what are the things that are hindering us in doing so? Let us pray that God gives us the desire to serve Him and teach us and impress to our hearts the gifts that we can use for the church edification. To our last point, every believer must work through the more excellent way. It says in verse 31, but earnestly desire the greater gifts. So since they're all part of the body with each different gifts, Paul instructs them in this verse to earnestly desire the greater gifts. Now he will explain more of this in chapter 14, but commenting on this, let me quote John MacArthur. Desire for them in this context is in reference to their use collectively and faithfully in His service. Not a personal yearning to have an admired gift that one did not possess. As a congregation, the Corinthians should be wanting the full expression of all the gifts to be exercised. End quote. So, the greater gifts... What are the greater gifts then? The greater gifts then would be the gifts that are much needed in the particular or local church, in this context, the, Corinth, the Corinthian church. Again, because of their envious attitudes towards the gifts, they were desirous of certain gifts but would neglect their own gift. And so, even though 
they're not lacking in any gift as stated in chapter 1, their spiritual growth is being hampered for not doing their part in the assembly or inside the church. Again, Paul will explain more of this in chapter 14 of them wanting a certain gift for themselves but neglecting the much-needed gift that will edify the church more. So watch out for that. Chapter 14. We're going back in verse 31. Their hearts must focus in using the gifts given to them in edifying the church, especially in their own local church at Corinth. Because that's the purpose of the gifts. The purpose is to equip and edify the church. And not just selfishly add to heart the gift that they want for themselves and check out. Ping! Alam niyo yung shopping. <laughs> Para po silang nag-add to cart ng gusto nilang gift. It doesn't work that way. Every gift, all the gifts are sovereignly given by God according to His design. Verse 12 of Ephesians, ang ating pong scripture reading kanina, chapter 4, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Brethren, whatever gift or gifts you've been given must be geared towards the equipping and edifying of the saints and not for personal promotion and selfish desires. So Paul, Paul will now show them how, how they can do this without their selfish, self-serving, and prideful attitudes towards the gifts. How? The last line in verse 31 says, And I show you a still more excellent way. He says, Here's how you can work together and build each other up in the body. This is how you should avoid disunity with regards to these gifts. And what is the more excellent way? What is the more excellent way? Hindi ko po mababasa ang isipan ninyo. <laughs> In chapter 13, it is love. The way of love is the more excellent way. The next chapter, chapter 13, is all about love. Believers are to use their individual gifts and operate in the one body with love. The preview to preview that, no matter, Paul says in chapter 13, no matter how gifted you are and how prominent the gifts you have, if you don't use it with love, instead self, or sorry, love that is selfless and always desiring for the other's welfare, if you don't use it that way, he says, you are nothing. You are nothing. The gifts are for the common good. The common good of the church. Not for personal gain. It is impossible to achieve that purpose without operating in love. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16, the gifts are for the common, sorry, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Brethren, since we've been saved from our sins, grafted into the family of God and now belong to His body, the church, let us all be united in working together in love, using our individual gifts to equip 
and build each other up so that we may all attain maturity in Christ. That's the goal. The, the purpose of the gifts that we've been given. But yeah, sir, ma'am, if all of this don't make any sense to you, yung sinabi ko po more than 30 minutes, walang saisay, hindi, hindi mo maintindihan ito. And maybe you're thinking, why in the world would you waste your precious time and invest it to Christ Church? Friend, maybe you're religiously and tediously attending the fellowship, the tr this gathering. But friend, that's a manifestation that you're still not a part of the body of Christ still don't understand the glories of the kingdom away from the welfare or the common good. The glories of the kingdom that through the incarnate God, Jesus, forgiveness to your sin is available because He paid for it with His most precious blood. He died to pay for the penalty of our sins. And if you would come to His terms, that is repentance of your sins and putting your faith only in Him, you would be saved. That's the gospel, my friend. Be reconciled to God. And because of that, that's more than enough reason for us, all of us who believe, who believe Christ. That's more than reason for us to be of service to our only head, only King, only Lord, one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. Brother Jack. So as we reflect and contemplate on the things that we have learned today, I want to just repeat what Brother Ian read in Romans 12, verses 4 and 6, and then verses 10 and 11. It says, For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, but having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, giving preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, being fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And so, as a body, may we respond by obedience to what we have learned, to serve God and to serve one another with the gifts He bestowed on us. Today, until with Christ, we stand in glory. And so, also we invite all the saints of GFC who are able to please rise as we respond and sing one last hymn. O Church, arise.
to war, to love the captive soul, but to reach against the captor and win a soul that makes the wounded whole. We will fight to pain and battle. In case we some announcements for our church life and yeah since we are a living organism we don't only exist every Sunday so here's our life for this week on Thursday Tagalog Bible study that is online via GFC um, page okay that starts at 8 p.m. and then on Friday that is um, here at GFC Center, that Golden Ladies. Okay. That starts at 1 p.m. Okay, and yeah, for, sorry, for men of the word, uh, I have to do this um, correct because binili ng po ni Brother Carlo. So, there will be no men of the word on October 25. I see. Yung Wala. Pero, okay, that's for, uh, we can all prepare for the GFC church camp. Yeah, because yun na po yung week na yun. But, instead, there will be a workshop for men. Yeah. Exclusive for GFC members. Okay. Sa wakas, naka lima na po ba yung wog? <laughs> First pala. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Okay. okay, so yeah. Um, exclusive for GFC members, that is called the seminar would be Man Up. Okay, training men to lead and facilitate Bible studies. That would be on November 16, Saturday, here at GFC Center. Starts at 9.30 until 1 p.m. Okay. So, yeah, that's all. Let's pray. Father God, indeed, you are gracious and sovereign. Our Lord Jesus Christ, ikaw po ang nagtatag ng iglesia. And you are sustaining it. And so, Lord God, help us, Lord God, and still in our minds that we work together in harmony, in unity, with fervent love for each other. Help us, Lord God, to even reflect the unity 
that you, that you have, Jesus Christ with the Father. This week, saan man po kami mapadpad to our workplace, school, at home, Father God, may we reflect Christ in our lives. And Lord, we pray and ask and beg that you keep us faithful until Christ return, Father God. Now, the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do His will, working in us that which is pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone.